Hey everybody, Mr. Macintosh here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to install Mac OS Big Sur on an unsupported Mac. When Big Sur was announced, multiple 2012 and 2013 models were dropped from the compatibility list, but they are more than powerful enough to run Big Sur. So if you wanna run Big Sur, I'll show you which patcher to use because there's multiple patchers. dos did not do a patcher this year, so a couple other people have made a patcher available. But again, it's confusing because there's so many out there. Which one do you use? I picked the easiest one. So I'm gonna go through a live demo to show you how that works. So let's jump in and get started. This Mac right here is an early 2013 MacBook Pro. It is not in the list of compatible Macs for Mac OS Big Sur, but is more than powerful enough to run it. So I'm gonna show you what happens here. I've got the installer here, and I wanna show you what happens if you attempt to install Mac OS Big Sur. You can download it, you can get it started, you can click agree here, you can click here, and this is where it says you cannot install all this on your computer. So this is where it's like a full stop. So what do we do, right? We need a patcher. In the past, you're probably familiar with DOS Dude. He's been the leader in getting a patcher available to do all the work, all the legwork to get this done every single year. He's taken a year off. He said, you know what? There's a lot of changes in Big Sur. I'm taking a year off. There's so much work involved. I'm going to let all the other people pick up. And they have. The community has jumped in to get us a patcher out there for everybody to be able to use. So I went through multiple. There's a, there's a bunch of patchers out there put together by the community and if you're a beginning Mac user and you want to use Big Sur they can be a little bit confusing. There's a lot of instructions that you got to go through so I went through and I picked the easiest one to use here and I'll show you which one that is. It's called Patch Sur. This is one of the easiest ones that has a GUI installer that takes you through multiple different steps and you can see the, the contributors here Ben and Wolf and John put this together and their contributors into making this work. And this is the one that we're gonna use. I'm gonna switch over to a uh, screen recording version so we can follow along. Before we begin, Patch Sir, this version, only works right now from Catalina. If you have Mojave, this particular video isn't for you. And if you guys want that, let me know in the comments if you're looking for something else to patch from maybe High Sierra or Mojave. But for now, you gotta make the jump to Catalina. Then once you're on Catalina, then you can use Patch Sur to be able to make the jump to Big Sur. Okay, so let's first talk about which Macs are compatible with Big Sur Patcher. Now this is really important because technically all the way back to 2009, Macs are supported. It modifies, the patcher modifies the installer to be able to install on these particular versions. The important piece is how your Mac will perform on Big Sur. And the most important thing is, is if your Mac is compatible with Metal Graphics and Acceleration. If it's not compatible with Metal Graphics and Acceleration, it'll be very slow and I do not recommend that you install it because it's not going to be very usable. Again, for example, if you open up Safari, if you have one of the metal Macs, it's going to open up like normal, what you expect. But with some of the older ones without hardware acceleration, and again, in the future, and I'll update you if this happens, someone might be able to figure out how to get ex hardware acceleration working. If they do, I'll have another video to show you, but up until now, that's not available right now. So that's why this list here, a 2012 MacBook Air, 2012 MacBook Pro, 2013 early MacBook Pro, that's the one we're using as a test, 2012 Mac Mini, 2012 iMac, and 2013 iMac. All these are metal compatible Macs that were dropped from compatibility from Big Sur. And every single one on this list can run Big Sur just fine. If you don't have one of these ones, you can try it out. Don't get me wrong. This whole process that we're doing here will work, but the performance will be low. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about the patcher. There's two patches that we want to keep in mind here. There's Ben's Patch Sur, and there's Barry's uh, Big Sur Micro Patcher. The Micro Patcher works great, and actually, uh, the the patch sir uses some pieces from the micro patcher in here and there's a lot of instructions but it's a little bit more detailed and there's some extra steps that you got to kind of run through that's why in this video we're going to run through patch sir because it seems to be the easy way to get things going for beginner to intermediate type users to be able to do this we're on the patch site i'm going to put all these links in the description so you have these direct links to be able to get the patch sir and all the things that you'll need we'll scroll down here and, and these are all the instructions that we need we need to first go over to the release releases here. So over here you see the release 004 beta. Right click on this and then open a new tab. And these are the files. Let's scroll down a little bit. These are the files you're going to need. All you need is patch sir DMG. We'll click that. It's going to download it directly into your downloads folder. Right from your downloads folder we'll click this and we'll run patch sir. Let's minimize this Safari window. 
Okay, so this is the, the beginning of the installer here. First thing we need to do is right click on this icon to get it started. Right click and we'll click open. We'll get a message that the developer, are you sure we want to open it? That's okay. And we'll go click behind here and here's the first part of the installer. And we'll, I'll read you what it says. Patch Sur is simple. Easy to use patcher for Mac OS Big Sur on your unsupported Mac. It sets up the ideal environment for Big Sur that makes sure all your favorite services like iCloud still work. So let's get started. We'll click start here. Mac compatibility, he hasn't set this up yet. That's kind of why I went over the compatibility list. We already went over that. You know which ones are compatible and which ones will run slow. Let's click continue. Patch Sur is a simple application for running Mac OS on unsupported Macs. It uses all the official software from Apple but optimizes for your Mac. Please remember, Patch Sur should work perfectly fine on most Macs, but a lot can go wrong with the process, especially if you don't read the instructions. I don't suggest using Patch Sur with Mac Pros as the there is a much better patcher that is designed for those Macs. Star Player X Big Mac Patcher. Even if you don't have a Mac Pro, a lot can still go wrong that might result in data loss and slow software while in Big Sur. Kernel panics, no entry signs, and more. Please always make a time machine backup before using Patched Sur. Before we even continue, perform your backup because this is an upgrade. So if you have your data on here and something goes wrong, you got to be able to have a time machine or a USB hard drive or something that you can revert back to that it can have your data there if something goes wrong. It, once you have that, then you're safe. If something goes wrong, you revert right back to the time machine backup and you don't have to run it again or you can try again. So we'll click continue here. Now, the next thing is you want to set the update track. We're not going to do public beta and we're not going to do developer. We're going to do the release and that is for the production version here. Click continue. Clean installer upgrade. This version only supports upgrade. In the future, it will support a clean version. And what that means is that I could just boot after I create the USB installer. Boot to it and I don't need to perform an upgrade. And that'll be really nice. Click continue. This next part is going to download the tools and the Kex patches that's going to allow you to properly set the NVRAM and the SIP status so Big Sur lets you boot into it. This is the last tool that you'll use before installing Big Sur. Now that's done and the next part is is that we're going to download Big Sur. Now what's nice about this is that you can actually download and I'll put a link in the description to the direct download of, of the install assistant.package which is basically Big Sur installer app inside the package. When you run the install assistant package it installs the Big Sur app installer to your applications folder. And if you look over here, I've already got that package here because I wanted to save time. I don't want to sit here and wait two hours for it to download. We want to get going on this. If you don't have it, click on this button right here and it'll immediately start to download. It'll give you a nice progress bar. And when it's done, it'll bring you to the next step. But we're going to click other versions because we've already have it. And we're going to click on find an installer here and it's going to say where is it and i'm going to click on the desktop because that's where the install assistant is so we're going to click on that and open and again you're probably never going to need this again but if you're going to do multiple machines or if you just want a copy for the future that's put on a, on a hard drive or something download it from the link that i put in the description and you'll always have that and it'll save you a lot of time so we'll click open click use the pre-downloaded the one that we already have on the desktop and install assistant and now the next part is is it's going to actually install it and it needs your account password to be able to run the installer app and again this is running through the gui normally we would have to run this through terminal and run it as an administrator so we'll type in our password here continue and it's installing package now and it already finished. So we're all ready to the part where we're gonna build a USB installer that is patched that we're gonna use to boot this Mac to to install the patched version of Big Sur. Let's get that ready. And again, you can use any USB stick to be able to do this, but keep in mind the entire USB or the hard drive, whatever you use is going to be erased. We're gonna plug in our USB drive here and there it is. There's our USB flash drive. So now select a USB volume the USB drive must be 16 gigabytes or greater to store the main OS in recovery mode. If your USB does, drive doesn't show up, click refresh, refresh. And that's what we're going to do because it's not letting us continue. So we're going to click refresh here. Okay, now it's in the list. So we can click it and click continue. And it's again, one more warning. Everything on this drive, no matter if it's a hard drive, uh, a USB hard drive or a USB flash stick will be erased. So one final warning here. We'll click continue and it's creating the install media now. 
what it's going to be doing is it's going to be taking the Mac OS Big Sur installer app and using the create media binary to build a USB installer and it's going to patch that installer so the Mac can actually boot to it and I'll read this here creating install media due to the fact that the installer app cannot natively run on an unsupported Mac you have to create a USB installer where the environment can be modified so Mac OS doesn't check whether or not their Mac is supported. This can take up to a couple hours to let it run. And when he says a couple hours, it all depends on what kind of drive you're using. If you are, and look how quick we're already almost there, you can see that, that message pop up. I'm using a Thunderbolt SSD drive, so it's going to go a lot quicker than, let's say, if you have like a USB 2.0 cheapo uh, flash drive. Don't get me wrong, it'll still work. But that's why they're saying that it could take a little longer because just because of the transfer speeds of almost 13 gigabytes worth of space. We'll click don't use. If you see this time machine, click don't use. You can see that the name has already turned to install Mac OS Big Sur and it's in installing. You can actually open up activity monitor here so you can watch the transfer speed and then click on disk here and you can kind of see the data read and written per second. See the speed, look we're writing at about 190 megabytes a second to that hard drive so it's it's definitely flying here we'll move this to the side so we can kind of monitor the process here okay finished it says the patch is finished running you can now boot into the usb hold down option as soon as the mac turns on and select the yellow disc then you can run the installer like normal it does say reinstall mac os but that only replaces the system data not your data once that finishes you can patch your text and then post the install app that is now in your applications folder. Before we restart, let's close this window and I'll show you what we're gonna do here. Installer, so we can open it up so I can show you what, guys what's in there. It's just a full installer here. It's everything we need to do to boot our system to the Mac OS Big Sur and patched installer. We're gonna reboot this system here and I'm gonna show you what we need to do to get to the installer and a couple of the extra steps we need to do. Okay, time to reboot. What we need to do is go up here and we will restart. And we're gonna hold down the option key on the keyboard and that's gonna bring us to the boot selection screen here. Okay, you can hear that it booted up, holding down option and there's our boot selection screen. Now notice that we have two. It made the icon in the red so that it's saying, hey, don't boot to this one here, don't boot to this one you want to boot to the Mac OS Install Big Sur. Now, when I first did this, obviously selected Install Mac OS Big Sur, but I got a prohibited sign when I tried to boot to it. And I tried it multiple times, and then I actually had to click on the EFI boot once. It didn't go anywhere. But then I restarted again and clicked on this, and I can't tell you why that worked, but that's if you do have that happen, that's something that you can do. Let's see if this actually works here. So we're going to click on this. Once it's selected, click on the arrow, and it'll start to boot and no prohibited sign. And again, this might work perfectly for you. I might just had a little bit of a bump there when that happened and I wanted to let you know what to do if that happens here. So right now, it's booting off of the USB drive right to the patched Big Sur installer. Okay, we're in. We don't want to touch the drive at all. We're not gonna erase the drive or anything. We're just gonna perform an upgrade. So all we need to do is click on Mac OS Big Sur and then click continue. Click continue here and agree. Agree again. This is where it's going to say which hard drive you want to put it on. Obviously, we we'll want to put it on the internal hard drive and we're going to update that drive. Click continue. That's it. All we need to do is wait now. Mac OS Big Sur is going to upgrade over our existing Catalina install. And within maybe anywhere between 20 minutes and one hour, we'll be back up and I'll walk you through the rest of the we're process. Back. We are now on Mac OS Big Sur on an unsupported Mac. You'll be at the login window and all you need to do is log in with your password. There's only a couple last things that we're going to need to do and you're all set to go here. The first thing we need to do is we need to install some files and some kecks that will allow our Wi-Fi and USB to work. And the best part of the installer was is it already put those files into a nice little application into your applications folder. So let's click not now here and you can enable Surrey but we won't enable that for now. We're in. Now, I'll show you what we need to do. Here's, it's optimizing, so you give it a little time to finish the optimizing. Sometimes it has to do the spotlight indexing and kind of stuff like that. So if it seems a little bit of slow, give it some time to finish optimizing everything that has to do with Mac OS Big Sur right after it finished the upgrades. So we're gonna click on close here for now. 
And as you can see, the Wi-Fi is on, but it can't find any Wi-Fi networks in the area. And that's because we need to install the files that'll make this work. So all we need to do is go into Macintosh hard drive and then go into the applications folder and we'll look for our Big Sur Patcher piece here. And there's our Patch Sur. That's what we need to start. We need to right click on it and then click open. And then we can click open. And then our, here's our application. So now all we need to do is we want to patch the texts. And you can go into some settings. I want to show you these settings real quick. These are, it says, if Big Sur is running a little slow, it says that you want to disable animations. It might help speed up Big Sur a little bit. Well, we're not going to do that right now. So we're going to go back home and we're going to do the patch the text. So here's what this says, patch texts. Patching your text will get you Wi-Fi, USB, and, and many other things working on Big, your Big Sur installation. Without these texts, your Mac would not be at its full potential on Big Sur and several things might not work. Makes sense, right? And yes, it does. So we're going to click on continue here. Patching your CAX, your USB, and many other things, and it, and it kind of repeats this. We'll force the skip check here. And then it's going to ask us for the password here. And it's there it goes. It's going to patch now. So we'll give it a second to finish the patching. And then it's going to ask us to reboot the system. And then we'll test out USB and we'll test out Wi Fi. Okay, we're done. All we need to do is click on restart to finish. And there she goes. We'll give it a second here to come back up. And we'll be able to test our USB and our Wi-Fi. I'm gonna get a USB stick ready for here and we'll plug this in. See, it boots pretty fast for a 2013 device. That probably only took about maybe 20 to 25 seconds to fully boot a Mac OS Big Sur system. So that's not that bad. Log in here. And we've got our patch sir menu here and let's check our Wi-Fi and look at that we're already connected to our remembered network that we had before so let's test out our Wi-Fi here see if we can get to the internet here all right we are rocking and rolling check that out so now that our Wi-Fi is working let's go down here and check to see if our USB is working I'm gonna plug in a USB flash stick here and there it is look at that it's working great there's our USB installer for Big Sur. So that's it, guys. It's macOS Big Sur using the Big Sur Patcher on an early 2013 unsupported MacBook Pro. Let me know, and did this work for you? How's the performance on your system? Did it work as easy as it worked in this video? Let me know if you have any problems. It will help you out in, in the comment section. And if this video created value for you, consider liking and subscribing for more videos like this in the future. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks.